The X-Max 3 from Chidi Tech is one of the most affordable helmet class printers out there. But I hear you, this print volume with these features? What's the catch? Surely this has terrible finicky hardware and it's a nightmare to dial in. Nope. Keep watching. I'm Ross and this is Fohammer Videos. So if you're quite new to 3D printing, you probably haven't even heard of Chidi Tech. And why should you trust my opinion about them? Well, I'm one of the few people who know how to pronounce it correctly because I ask the company the hard-hitting questions like how do you pronounce Quiddy Tech? And they told me, it's Chidi. It's weird, but that's what it is. Anyway, the printer. Now look, I'd never heard of them before either before they offered to send me their X Plus 3. Well, actually it was one of their partners who I don't even speak to anymore, but now I speak to them directly. And I reviewed the X Plus 3 and determined, well, it was fundamentally broken and you should stay away from it. But then they went and took it off sale, revised it and re-released it as one of the best enclosed Core XY printers currently on the market. And you can see my video on that for more info. And now Chidi have sent me the new X Max 3, which look, it's exactly the same printer as that, but this one has a much larger build volume of 325 by 325 by 315 millimeters. This is the largest Core XY printer I have and, well, it's a heavy bugger. Just getting it into my room and onto my worktop was an absolute chore. And unboxing can be quite tricky. I had to do most of it on the floor. Being a Core XY, there's no building to do though. In fact, the whole setup of this printer is incredibly straightforward. Take out all of the foam, then unclip a few cable ties and unscrew the securing bolts for the build plate. That's it. You can't get this wrong because even if you do ignore the instruction manual, which I tend to do, if you plug it straight in, the out of box startup sequence on the display walks you through this step by step. So if you ignore that and go ahead and break your printer, well, that's entirely on you. You had three chances to get it right. But once that's done, it also walks you through the automatic leveling process, which the printer does completely on its own. And then it makes several weird vibration tones for a few minutes as it learns to compensate for nozzle shaking. Also supporting this are four vibration dampening rubber feet. But that's it. Load in some filament and you're ready to go. However, when it comes to filament loading, this is the one bit where I actually have a gripe about the printer, but this is literally the only gripe I have. And I'm going to keep complaining about this until brands stop doing it. Because with most enclosed Core XY printers lately, for some reason, it's the hot trend to put the filament spool holder on the back of the printer. And this holder is better than most because it's an enclosed box that you stick a bag of desiccant in and that's to reduce humidity. But getting to this to change filament means you need constant access to the back of the printer or you need to spin it round, which isn't easy because this is big and heavy. And to make it even worse, the hole to feed the filament out of the box is tiny and in an awkward place too, and unlike the X Plus 3, the PTFE tube for this is so short and at an awkward angle that pushing a reel through the filament runout sensor is an absolute pain. My advice here is do not use this at all. Get a filament dryer box to stand by the side of the printer and get a longer PTFE tube to feed to the printer directly, just like I did with my X Plus 3. Now when it comes to the externals, well, it's a decent looking printer, but all of this sexy black and silver casing is just a housing for the fully metal frame of the printer itself. Now it does annoy me a little bit that the USB port for this is on the top at the back, but thanks to its included network port or built-in Wi-Fi, I've never actually needed to use the port. When it comes to Wi-Fi setup though, it can be a little bit tricky and there's guides online telling you how. When it comes to the actual printer itself, it's fine. Just use the UI to connect it to your local Wi-Fi or for Ethernet users, just plug it in and let DHCP do the rest. But on the slicer side, you need to go into printer settings, then press the settings cog here, you enter its IP address, the browse function just doesn't work. But if you do get stuck, Chidi has a really useful video along with several other really useful config videos in the guide tab of the Chidi slicer. Now, unfortunately, this is essentially a large GIF, so you can't pause it or get detailed written walkthroughs. But if you open up two copies of Chidi Slicer, you can follow the guides on one and perform them in another. And Chidi Slicer is pretty good. Of, of course it's good. It's based on Prusa Slicer. They originally had Chidi Print, which is still on the website. Do not get that. That's based on Cura. And I tested that with my original X Plus 3 
and it was horrible. They took a bad app and made it worse. This time they've changed very little and just made it more Chidi branded. But you can still access all of the clipper based network info and controls on the device tab of the slicer. And most of the complexity is hidden from the end user. On the front settings screen, you simply choose your printer and material, and then the layer heights are essentially the different printer profiles. Clicking the settings button next to this will give you more of the detailed options with more configuration hidden behind the advanced and expert settings, slowly introducing users to more as they begin to tinker whilst still leaving it simple to induct new users. Personally though, I've moved over to Orca Slicer whenever I can, and this is based on Bamboo Studio, which is also based on the Prusa Slicer, which in turn is based on the original Slicer application. I just find this app much more intuitive to use, with better controls for things like part orientation and supports. And once again, you do still get all your detailed Clipper firmware info directly in the Slicer. Chidi Slicer is easier to set up for these printers, but Orca is easier to use and print stuff, if that makes sense. And as for printing stuff, well, this is one rapid beast. And I do like that Chidi haven't made any outrageous marketing claims on their website like other brands have with 12 times faster than other printers because tons of printers have sped up lately. Though the claimed 600 millimeters a second print speed or 600 millimeters a second speed is actually a bit of a misnomer because speed's limited by the filament you put through it more than the printer itself. Within the included profiles, even at its fastest on the ultra-fine print setting, only the infill is close to that speed at 430mm a second, and even the travel speed is only 500mm a second. So the truth is, this is fast enough for any type of filament, like pretty much any modern printer, but this is really stable. The Benchy, again like every other printer nowadays, printed in just 16 minutes without issue. And I'd love to tell you more problems with this printer, but I just didn't find any. Every single thing I put through this printer worked, no matter how awkwardly complex the parts were. And thanks to this beast, I now have nearly 50% of my Batman Halloween costume. But as you'll see from a future printer review, I wasn't able to finish that costume. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out why. Again, I don't mind upsetting printer companies. I'm going to tell you directly which one let me down. So you probably want to know where this stacks up against the competition. Well, at this price for this size of printing area on an enclosed Core XY printer, there's very little for it to stack up against. I immediately think of the Creality K1 Max, which is a little cheaper, but also has a slightly smaller build area. And everything nowadays is compared to Bamboo's FDM printers, but they're a different thing, more focused on simpler user experiences out of the box. With this, you can, as I have, just print out of the box, even with some of the cheapest basic PLA filaments, but it's far from a toy, and it's a serious unit for printing big things easily at a heck of a price. But I suppose where it is cheap and does lack a little bit out of the box, if you're looking for a couple of popular modern features like LiDAR or multi-color printing, or even just a time-lapse camera, you're kind of on your own with this one. Those features though tend to be tailored more towards more basic printer users like me. If you're happy to do a little bit of tweaking to get the most out of this unit, you'll have something incredibly powerful. Assuming of course you want something of this size, you're unlikely to be disappointed. So whilst this brand are unknown, like everyone nowadays is still talking about Creality, they're talking about Prusa, they're talking about Flashforge, I'm hoping that in the upcoming generations, Chidi Tech are up there and spoken about just as frequently as all of the other more popular well-known brands. Because yeah, they've appeared out of nowhere, and whilst they have had other printers before, it's this third generation which is the one that competes with the more well-known brands. And with the power that the X Max 3 has, it would take a lot to take this away from me. If you found this video helpful, please drop me a like down below and a comment for the algorithm. I want to say thanks for watching and thanks to our channel members who really do make it possible for us to keep making these videos. Please consider joining them, get your name up in lights too, along with early access and more exclusive videos. Until next time, TTFN, Fohammer out.